no THC today. He's unfortunately uh, feeling under the weather, so um, you know, hopefully he gets well soon. Um, so I'm going to be lone wolfing in a bit, but also I got all of you here today too, um, and I hope um, everyone feels free to you know chime in whenever. Um, hop in on the combo. I, I very much appreciate having someone to talk to. Jinzo's already already here to help me out. I'm much appreciated. Um, but yeah, kind of, kind of going to go through a little, probably a little more casual version without having another host here. But um, yeah, we can really talk about whatever. I got several talking po- points. Going to probably start out with the hot topic, which is, um, which also has to do with macro as well, um, which is this roaring kitty stuff. Um, for those of you who uh, who are just logging in for the morning um, and haven't really been on Twitter, um, the the basically the person who started the whole GameStop movement, Roaring Kitty is his username. Um, just tweeted for the first time in over, I think, in about three years. Um, he hasn't tweeted since 2021, and he just tweeted. Um, his first tweet was uh, just the the gamer chair where he like where you like this where you like uh, move forward in the chair like you're locked in. Uh, um, and that and just that tweet alone sent GameStop's uh, stock absolutely soaring. Um, it is now, I believe it's up about like 70% or so on the day. I don't have it right in front of me at the time. Um, yeah, it's about, about 70% um, over the last day. Um, because as he is, you know, kind of back, it seems he's tweeted a couple other times, just some like video little clip montages um about how how he's back and i think you know, the market's responding very well to it at the moment there's a lot of um you know opinions getting thrown a lot around i kind of want to dive into it a little bit and to kind of see where we can capitalize ourselves i think um you know just in general um a little bit about him he he's People are calling him like the TradFi GCR. Um, he's obviously moving markets in a big way himself. Um, he was the main character in the movie Dumb Money. Um, if any of you guys have seen that, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. Um, but he's also a real person um, where, you know, he he kind of orchestrated the whole GameStop short squeeze uh, crisis. And, and now um, he's back, it seems. Um, in my opinion, that's a pretty good thing um, because GameStop is basically like the definition of retail almost in that it's like a lot of just normal people buying up the stock um, as a collective in, in kind of a way that's like us against, you know, the big hedge funds, the rich guys. It's like the normal people are buying this up and 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 that those are kind of who the people were that contributed to the big rally. Um, back in the beginning of 2021, um, and now with him tweeting last night, um, him him being the leader of the movement, um, you know, it's it seems that retail wants to be risk on again. Um, this is early though. I mean, it just happened last night, um, and he's tweeted a couple times again this morning. So um, we'll see if it's going to be a continuation of the trend. I think. You know, seeing a sustained rally of GameStop over the next couple of days will be really good confirmation um, that retail is back, um, at least in the meme stock world, um, and wanting to to take some more risks again, um, which is, again is a very good sign for us. I think, you know, how it translates to crypto is if you look back about what happened last time. Um, here's a good tweet actually from Ansem. I'm posting a voice hangout chat. Um, it shows that when GameStop uh, his rally ended back in like January of 2021, after that, the uh, Doge had hits huge rally and it went 100x after GameStop was already like already hit its all time high. So there's that rotation there that kind of people are expecting now that, you know, once you know, once people um, have their fun with the meme stocks, then they're also gonna they're gonna just transition right over to, uh, you know, meme coins now because it's you know in a similar boat. And you know, I think people are 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 expecting that to, and I'm ex- I would be expecting that to take place 
uh, even faster, that rotation, just because the playbook is kind of already there from last time. People already know, right, that, that look, if, if they're going to take risk in, in these meme stocks, then they're probably going to start bidding up meme coins too. And we saw a pump across the board already with people trying to be early to that rotation uh, and a ton of meme coins, you know, with uh, is up big, Pe- Pepe is up big. Um, a lot of the other ones, there's obviously coins that are tied to these, um, these TradFi stocks as well. are doing incredibly well. The GME coin, I think, is up 20x um, since yesterday. There's like a, there's a coin called Kitty um, that's up 100x from yesterday. And I think, you know, if you do want to continue to play kind of the beta move of, you know, if, if there is other stocks, you know, maybe like AMC, I think is up big as well. Um, but it, but these stocks that have, if, the, if there is any like rotation, even in the stock world, um, to other stocks, I think just playing this, the same ticker in crypto uh, is probably going to be a good move too. You know, the, the whatever ticker version on Soul of that, of that stock, you know, um, will, probably, will likely do well as, as well. So I think in general, this is like a really good news for the markets, especially meme coin markets. Um, just, just to be able to have retail back and taking risks um, is good for our bags. I think if they do rotate, um, in my opinion, they, they rotate to, to the big newer players. Um, I'm sure Doge will, will catch a pump as well, um, but it's not going to be the, the multiples that will, be, that will be seen in some of the bigger leaders. Um, I think, you know, coins like Whiff, Pepe, Opcat, Bowdoin, Tramp, uh, Trump coin, whatever. Those are probably uh, we've already seen them have enough mind share to where they can they can really take off. And I think um, those will probably be the first ones. But in general, um, if this does last, then I can see us having a, a continuation of meme coin season in general where a bunch of new coins pop up and do really well, um, too. So um, it's really good for risk on. I would if you want to be, you know, aggressive here. I think you can get in the streets right now and start playing some coins um, and taking bets. But if you want to be a little more conservative, I think it makes it makes sense. Um, I think there'll be plenty of time if it is a true rally coming back. Then there's plenty of time, and you can be you can wait a little bit, you know, wait a few days and see if this rally continues. I think if it sustains itself and Bitcoin, you know, doesn't dump over this over this time, it stays flat to up from where it is now. Um, and you know, like GameStop itself is probably the big one to watch. If GameStop continues to rally for the next few days, it probably is a, a good sign that this this trend is is here to stay for a little while. Um, and you can be be more at risk on with meme stuff. Um, and hopefully, uh, retail from TradFi uh, makes their rotation over into crypto, um, and then we'll be ready for that. So um, I'm gonna stop there. If if anyone has any thoughts around uh the whole roaring kitty stuff coming back as well as meme coin stuff in action um hopefully we had some winners in here um from some of these latest events over the past 24 hours but i'll stop there if anyone else uh you know wants to chat yeah jim he's definitely the godfather of like meme coins and the whole movement it's it's a very important thing that he's back it's actually pretty crazy yeah, Pep is moving. It's not. It's about. It did lose a digit actually on some markets. It's um, it lost a zero and it's moving up. It's about to go to all time high. So it's starting, man. We're we're starting to bubble over here. Yes, sir. Pepe looking really good. Whiff's looking really good. Yeah. Looking really good. Yeah. I think it's like Whiff too. Yeah, it's up a bunch, like three sixteen now. I think it was, it was under three yesterday. It was like two seventy five yesterday. So. Yeah, I feel like Whiff is. I I know you don't talk about it. You don't want to like because I know you're like very exposed to it. So you try not to like, you know, you're biased. So you try not to talk about it too much. But I mean, yeah, it's ready to go. I feel like Pepe uh, Whiff is one of those that's getting ready to get back over four soon. It's if you look at the chart, it's crazy. It's just been trending between the two point eight to three point three range nonstop for the last few weeks or whatever, and uh, it's gonna erupt eventually. There's no way it's gonna stay low while Pe- while Pepe and maybe Bonk and others start moving up it's gonna it's gonna get there too and i've been um loading up on dips because of that just a rally reminder yeah you're right Ciao. going on right now i'm too claim thanks for the reminder actually i called it out and then i stopped looking at my screen <laughs> there it is nice
we'll do a live a little uh bonus drop for the people also if you're uh, doing ikb the uh ikb.gg stuff on nba bets and stuff they have a big tournament today um if you play this is the day you want to play it's competitive but um there's a big prize pool so whatever i threw a bit of money in there on on um the contest yeah for sure i was gonna talk about that cool yeah I just um, that. So at I'm some point i was yeah. already <laughs> oh yeah good shot yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it. yeah we can transition to that real quick um unless uh has any thoughts around coins any any plays that you guys are looking at right now um to take advantage of this recent hype in the last 24 hours um anything you're bullish on to continue running or yeah, counterpoints yeah. if, you, if anyone thinks that uh this is just like a little a little bump i like that meme coins are moving for me it's just the market's still in a weird place a lot of stuff is just trending sideways i don't know how long it's gonna last i know usually a lot of people step back from the market in may june um but i feel like meme coins are the strongest it's, it's been the narrative for a while now and i don't know why it's just well i know why memes are memes rule the world right but i feel like that's the play right now what, what else do you really want to buy i don't think bitcoin's going to do another like 2x anytime soon maybe maybe slowly it will but you know everybody's looking for that quick money and they're trying to rally behind a meme and it just keeps every time we think memes are going to come down and maybe come down a little bit and crash or whatever then another narrative pops up to make them to make them juicy again. So I don't I feel like they're too strong to die, at least for now. Sometimes you see it you see a time where we rotate, right? From meme coins die and then all the other coins start doing well or whatever. There's are there's always cycles, but it just feels like we really are, as cliche as cliche as it sounds, we really are in a in a meme coin super cycle. That's all it's been moving for the last six months. Yeah, I um I don't know if you guys read um Fibonacci's field report, but might be a good way to start the week. Um, I'll just link it here in the chat. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I would say things are going sideways, man. I mean, I've I've had this trend line on ETH for a while now since March 11th, and it's a pretty solid downward trend that we're in, and there hasn't really been any fear associated with it yet so the, the sentiment feels like chop right but it's down the trend is down but it feels like chop um maybe because we're still you know close somewhat close to that three thousand range so it still feels pretty good um so i don't know if sentiment is kind of sideways more than the price um so yeah, it's kind of hard to guess where things are going, but yeah, memes and the gamble with memes is definitely the only thing that kind of seems like it's on people's radar right now. I don't see anybody talking about majors, um, a big cap, mar you know, big market cap coins really. So I, I definitely, I don't feel like we're in a bull at all. I don't feel like we're necessarily in a bear either. I think we're just kind of in a discovery you know, figuring it out phase. Um, I think the election and the macro and the international stuff has a big part to deal with the the majors not really being, you know, something that we're talking about. I think everyone's kind of waiting for the big picture to sort itself out. Yeah, the memes are fun right now. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. I always felt we were a little bit too premature. And we're like in a pre-bull. I still think we are. Maybe we're going to get kick started soon the, the um, bitcoin i think is what was driving us the most right we saw all the narratives surrounding bitcoin etfs and this and that and that kind of helped us get to where we were we we got to 70k way too fast like we, that's never happened before where we get to all-time highs before happening so there's definitely a lot of you know artificial uh news well not new artificial but there's a lot of news that brought us there kind of artificially and prematurely so yeah i mean I feel like now we're more where we're supposed to be, you know, like we should have been at 3k kind of like we're, we're still too early in a way. So hopefully we start creeping back up, but there are a lot of things that are going to hold us down, like elections and uncertainty and war and a lot of things that maybe are, are kind of drag, dragging us back down too. So whatever, slow and steady, I guess, hopefully we break the downtrend and we start moving back up, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that we def we definitely don't have that we've had, we had in the previous having, having cycle and on the previous bull market cycles was, you know, we don't have any 
any stimmies. The big, the big deal is that it's the opposite, right? right? Like people are getting raked over the coals in terms of inflation and cost of living and stuff. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to picture a world where, you know, big caps two, three, four X when you know, normies don't have any money to put in. That's true. Too, so, um, but no, I think we're, I think we're doing a little post having traditional move here. We got the having move, you know, almost up to all time highs on both the ETH and Bitcoin. And, um, we don't really have the, the people putting the money in to really break and in, in moon from those all time highs. So I think the market's super healthy right now. Um, way it's kind of trending down after the having because i mean how many how, we're looking forward to that having news for two years right so we got a good move off of it and um we're we're just can i think we're just kind of consolidating and letting the macro figure itself out yeah i think i think the word of like caution and pause um is smart in this in this area i do like with bitcoin still chopping a bit and macro still uncertain um you know, I think there's plenty of time to wait if you want to if you want to be more, you know, sure about the trend itself and not be, you know, trying to like guess the early part of it. I have a tendency to do that because I <laughs> I'm very just I probably have way too high of a risk tolerance, um, but I, I like to try to be early as possible. But I know a lot of people um, prefer to have a more conservative approach where they you know, wait until the trend forms itself. And I think that's a smart route, especially right now where if there is a trend that actually forms. I think it's going to last for quite a while since we have been chopping for so long. I think whenever we break out of this chop and get more risk on, it's going to last quite a while um, and will and will be pretty fruitful. So you don't really need to be super early to it. Um, in my opinion, I think if you want to wait, a, a good levels are, especially like Bitcoin, I, I've seen, Know, some really smart traders who said like above like 67k is a pretty good one to start to get um more bullish um and then even more so above like 70 72k um if you want to wait till then to really start to get more risk on uh with your bets um and also just in for meme coins as well i think if you want to wait a couple days right now and just just see how gme is doing i think that's probably with it being like the leading indicator today i think it's likely going to be the leading indicator for the next few days as well and if that continues to to go over the next continues trending up over the next couple of days i think that's a good signal for for the meme market um that, that that'll probably do well for the for a little while so i think if you do want to be more conservative um and wait until things really start shaping up more um then that's a smart move too yeah i think i think that's a good point um i think waiting is good Especially like if you're the type that's going to spread risk around, like you're just going to end up hopefully at the best breaking even if you spread it around five or six memes, right? Like something, it's going to consolidate into one of two memes, maybe three. So if you wait and kind of wait for, if you start seeing red on like the overall meme, um, I guess you could say like portfolio or whatever you want to call it, the index were to put together you know 15 meme coins and make it an index if you see uh you know 10 of those 15 going red then you're probably looking at consolidation into you know like pepe or whiff or you know some of the other bigger meme coins so i think that patience is a is a good idea so for one it'll prevent you from stressing about multiple coins going up and down and up and down and figuring out which one to get into and being patient and kind of seeing which one's going to be the short-term winner could also turn into a pretty good long-term winner once a full bowl kicks off one reminder too before we transition from uh coins here is check if you're at you're um eligible for spec i was able to claim 900 tokens and they're like at 10 bucks so worth taking a look i'm going to put it in chat i wasn't time sensitive and sure. so i'll just link to it um, you know what know the determined yeah. the drop because I, I didn't qualify so i was curious yeah, i'm I mean, sure other people that. might be curious too <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure that I could read the details. They're in that post, but um, I think if yeah. you only had if you had some pack, you qualified. If you had some, uh, if you had a, a pudgy, you qualified. But that wallet with your pudgy had to have like a few transactions in it. 
Uh, I actually didn't qualify with my pudgy because it's in my legend. I was kind of dumb with them, but whatever. And um, yeah, a few different things. There's I could link you. If you check on the post I just put, there's the 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 Google Doc takes you right to the the recipient category and what you get and what you needed to do. Yeah, there's a uh, towel holders. Um, the smart blocks ones in here too. Chromy squiggles, Fidenza, Meridian, Rose. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Ringers. Um, and then some spectral. I actually don't really know much about spectral. Oh, there's also an airdrop for Farcaster for high activity users on base, it says. Um, oh, I must have I must have gotten it because of Persenium. So that means fucking if my pudgy would have qualified, I would have been 20k. It's 3.1. 3.1% of the supply for pudgies. Oh no, wait, but that means. There might be more holders of that too, so maybe though you get less per pudgy. Yeah, great shout out. I I, I missed that post. Um, I don't think I qualify, but you should try it out. wallets and check because I'm telling you, man, it's an easy like I got an easy 10k. I didn't expect that. I thought it was gonna be a few hundred bucks, and that it was at six bucks when we claimed it, and it ran up that same day, and I missed it. I was working. It ran up to fifteen dollars. This fucking coin. It would have been a over fifteen thousand dollar airdrop. Um, yeah, while we were talking, by the way, Pepe, Pepe ran like crazy at another big candle. No way. Over the one cent mark, it's almost it's like 0 0.01, almost 0 0.011 now. Oh, that, that's, uh, that's officially new all-time high. Officially. And Wick, oh, yeah. Yeah, new all-time high. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, that's crazy. So, yeah, that that's pretty good confirmation already that there's more uh, appetite for meme coins in the market right now. Uh, new all-time high for them. and. Whiff, yeah, Whiff is running a bunch too. It's at, up at th almost three twenty-seven. What's the all time um, for that? Like four something? Yeah, four. Yeah, I want to say like four fifty or something yeah, like that. Let's see. Four point. Can you guys drop the uh, Pepe? Oh, yeah, four point. There's some people in chat asking about it. The what? The Pepe contracts. There's people in chat asking for it. I think. I find it. Yeah. Pepe contract? I know, I know I have it in some wallet. <laughs> I can't find it. Yeah, I got it here. You need the contract address, basically, for Pepe? Are you sure they're not asking about yeah. spec? He's asking for the claim link for spec. I don't see anyone asking for Pepe, but... Pepe, you can just find, like, CoinGecko. Or... Yeah. I put, it in. Oops. I put it in here anyway for Pepe in case someone wanted it. And I think someone was asking also about Pepe on Soul, but I don't know. That. Holy crap, that green line. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, crazy. that's what I saw. Yeah, I'm gonna hold my jam. Um, I mean, I think I bought a little high, but I bought this dip. And since everything's still running, I think it might have another leg up soon. A GM on soul, but yeah, go ahead. No, you're good. I was gonna change subjects. Um, but if there's anything else about mean coins and stuff or macro, Roaring Kitty, we could talk through it. Cool. Uh, yeah, I was going to bring up, uh, we got the latest distribution, uh, this was several days ago, but I want to rehash it, uh, and talk it through more. We got the latest distribution of Blast Gold. Um, it was definitely the biggest one yet. It might be, we don't know if it's the last one or not, but I think there's only like a couple weeks left. Um, if that until expected launch, um, of mainnet. So this might be the last one and it was a pretty hefty one. Um, I just linked the the, the uh, blog post about it in Voice Hangout Chat, and I think it, it says Defo won't be the last distro of gold. Have they said that? They confirmed that it won't, wasn't the last one. I didn't see that anywhere. They haven't. They haven't confirmed it, but there's one excerpt in here. Hold on, let me find it. Uh, DApps that had significant security incidents or negative community incidents received a weight of zero this round. However, dApps that learn and improve over time have the chance to earn gold in future rounds. And that was published in this blog three days ago. So I highly doubt they're, uh, you know, talking about future rounds of gold distribution with this being the last one. Nice. Good catch. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Um, yeah. So there's a CSV. I won't post it in here, but there's a CSV at the bottom of that blog that you can open up and see uh, the detailed distributions. I thought there was... Some pretty notable ones in there. Um, Thruster was the biggest one. That's the main DAX on class, so that makes sense. I think they, they got 2.5 million gold. And then uh, 
you know, the big story of, of the past week or two has been fantasy top and they're, they're the biggest ecosystem, um, outside of thruster that got gold that they got 2.2 million to give out, um, a very hefty amount. They've, That's huge. they got, I think 330 K that they're giving out in this next main tourney. And that's still like only a smaller portion of, of what they have. Um, and it seems like they need to give it out relatively quick too. So I would, I would anticipate future attorneys be, being even bigger than that. Um, based on the timeline um, that's needed to distribute this gold. Um, so that's great. Uh, D1 got 1.4 million. I think they were the third biggest one. Um, they still haven't given out their distribution for the second epoch, which is super annoying. Um, I'm getting... Uh, I don't know. I, I like I like what D1's doing, but it's I don't like the fact that it takes so long for them to give out gold. Um, I think they're kind of dropping the ball there. And uh, some up, a couple of notable ones, Captain and Company. I think they, Ezrin had a good post about them. I believe it was Ezrin in his field report how they changed to um, kind of some some daily questing, so it wasn't so much of a grind. Um, I still want I still need to get on that, but um, that's a pretty hefty uh, gold allocation if you're playing Captain and Co farm in there. Yolo got fit 580k. The Yolo Games, the gambling site. Um, Cambria got 430k, which is which is a nice hefty increase for them too. Um, and then IKB got 290 million, which is which I wanted to talk through real quick because that one's relatively time sensitive with their contest. Um, you know, getting close to fill, filled here for the day, but IKB that's that's over 5x what their previous distribution was, so. Um, I think that's notable that Blast uh, sees them as, as a growing, um, as sees them uh, in a favorable light, I guess, um, and, and as a growing uh, ecosystem. So they're allocating even more towards them. Um, IKB, for those who are unaware, is like a daily fantasy sports site. We talked about this um, a couple times, but in my opinion, it's like it's it's really good because it's daily fantasy sports has. Um, it has a very locked in um, product uh, use case. Like we've seen it with DraftKings and FanDuel. Like we know that people have a demand for, you know, this type of product and they have a, a pretty significant competitive advantage over the bit, the big players who are, you know, DraftKings and um, FanDuel and like underdog and prize picks um, and that they, they don't charge rake. Um, so no fees. Uh, for their contests, and they're able to do that because of the, this incentivization that they get from Blast and the and the the, um, the ability for them to launch a token, uh, which the team can profit on, and then they're, they're also you know the the bonus yield that they get from holding their deposits on Blast. Um, so they basically just get yield from you know users who deposit onto their site. Um, so that that gives them a, a pretty nice competitive advantage over these other players. Um, it might you know in the future it could certainly you know, incur some regulatory risk. But at the moment, um, especially while Blast Gold is going off, I think it's a really good farm. If you ha if you do at least a little bit of work um, and you're interested in fantasy stuff, uh, fantasy basketball specifically right now is their only contest is for NBA playoffs. Um, really, honestly, it's it's not crazy hard. Um, I think Ezrin is, is a good point of like someone who I, I don't think he had a ton of NBA experience, but he basically... You can you can use a lot of numbers and you can build a model um, and you just use projections from projection sites um, and basically like lock in whoever has like the best projections um, versus like ownership and try to balance that out um, and make teams um, basically just cop just based off of like what what uh, projection sites are out there, which there are plenty. Um, and right now, because it's no rake and because there's such hefty gold that they're giving out every single day as long as you're breaking even um you're farming gold um pretty in a pretty good amount so i just want to call that out i know it's not um everyone's cup of tea uh the fantasy sports stuff but it is a pretty good gold farm right now um especially you know that they just got this 5x the, the distribution and there's really not that many users um on the site at the moment um but there is a main there is the main contest today it locks at 7 p.m., um, but it's probably going to fill within the next hour, I would say, or two. Um, if you want to get on that, uh, just make sure to deposit through Blast to be able to earn gold. 
Um, yeah, I wanted to shout that out once again because I do think it's a really good farm for those who uh, put in a little work in, in like use projection sites uh, to build lineups. Um, and also Relic has been uh, very gracious in, in pinging out uh, pickums, um, which are kind of like betting slips on on how well players are going to do in the game. Um, uh, and he uses his own projections and model for that, and he does really well. Um, he has a really good win weight on those, and he's he's been pinging those out in the in the DFS uh, Rainmakers chat, betting chat, uh, for for people to copy. So, um, yeah, a couple ways that you can play it. Uh, yeah, that's all I got on IKB. I'm just going to repeat what you said there because it was important. Make sure you deposit with Blast Gold if you want to. Oh, no, sorry, with, with your Blast account on MetaMask if you want to qualify for gold. Because a few of us had deposited from credit card and we didn't have our wallets set and we weren't receiving gold. So that's the most important thing if you really want to farm. But yeah, I mean, it's fun. A lot of people that have don't have access usually to DFS that are around the world and, and aren't in, in the States. They never get to play these, so this is a good way of them to kind of learn and um, get involved and have some fun. It makes basketball a lot more fun. And it also, it's a really good gold farm. The fact that they have such a big allocation now makes it a lot easier to farm. Like, I was I was losing a lot of times because I'm not good at basketball at all. I don't do DFS on basketball. <laughs> and this has been yeah, making dude. it fun for me, man. It's been, it's been cool. I'm down, like, 175 bucks. Haven't won any bets. I've only made 6.5 gold, so not feeling mm -hmm. too great about it. Yeah, it's bad. But now it's like five times more gold than before. I wish I would have waited a little bit. I'm actually down two overall. Quite a bit, actually. Maybe a couple hundred bucks. Maybe a few hundred bucks. But, uh, hey, I made 80 gold. <laughs> yeah, I would gold. say if you are for farming, I would absolutely use, like if you're going to do the contest, I would absolutely use a projection site. Like you kind of have to for NBA. You're yeah. probably going to get smoked. Um, it's just they're just such a big sample size for NBA because they play so many games that people really have these projections nailed down um, on how well guys do. Um, oh, I would you you basically have to use a projection site. There's some good ones like ETR, Establish the Run. Um, I think uh, Stochastic is one that like Relic uses. There's a couple other ones out there for daily. Just just if you just type in like daily fantasy sports projection sites, um, there's some good ones out there. Um, yeah. But I would absolutely read projections. Just subscribe to one of those sites. Uh, and then for the pickums, like I probably wouldn't do your own. Um, you're probably not going to do well. Um, I'd probably just copy relics, honestly, if you're going to do it, um, unless you feel pretty confident about your your projections. Yeah, because basketball is weird. Like you'll tell yourself, "Oh, this guy did so well last game. He must play good against this team." And no, he'll just suck the next day. It's just. It's just there's just such a high variance because I guess they they use them differently from game to game, and maybe one player went off so like he played so hard one game that two days later he can't play as hard so they don't play him as hard. It's and they change strategy too so there's just so much to know. You just think oh these players did well last game so let me use them again again this game and you're gonna get smoked. <laughs> there's really a lot of variables to consider when picking players and those projection sites projection sites do a good job of like identifying them. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to get that, that in on IKB. Um, again, it's not for everyone. Um, I wouldn't like just blindly submit lineups. That's probably not going to be plus EV. Um, but if you can, if you feel like you can get to a spot where you, you're break even and you're using projections, um, definitely like ask around in, in our DFS chat if you want to get involved. Uh, we can we can help you out a ton. There's a lot of sharps in there that have been doing this for a long time. Um, who can help you make some good lineups um, if you want to get involved. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't just, I wouldn't just like blindly go in there and start submitting stuff. You probably won't, won't do that too well. Um, but if you can at least do like break even over the crowd, then it's a pretty good gold farm. Um, I would say I'm almost at like a thousand myself from wow. it, uh, playing it for like the last couple of weeks. Big, 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 big winner. I like it. Yeah, uh, other we other stuff on blast we should talk about. We should certainly talk about fantasy top. Um, that's the hot thing in the streets these days. Um, I know a lot of people in NBHQ are playing it. A lot of people are are up big on it. So it's excellent to see. Um, like I mentioned, they just got the biggest, um, I guess second biggest, the thruster uh, fancy or blast gold um, distribution at two point two million. Um, 
and they announce their next contest. Uh, their main contest is tomorrow. Um, uh, the second one, uh, we saw the first one um, pay out where half the people went up to the silver division um, and the other half stayed in bronze. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they they do the payouts for now that there's two different divisions. They they kind of hinted at if you're in the bronze division, you know, that you're still going to be able to, to capture some nice, some nice payouts if you get to the top of your division. Um, so it's a good way of you know, kind of separating the, the good lineups, um, giving, giving like some of the lower cost lineups a chance at, at winning decent prizes. Um, whereas, you know, more gold and, and prizes are going to be allocated to the silver division, obviously, because people are spending more money up there. So it'll be interesting to see how they do payouts. They added also uh, about 40 different or 40 new uh, heroes. Um, pretty notable ones like uh, I think like Elio Trades and uh, the Min guy who's like a big Izuki Maxi who posts all the time. Um, I don't know. I can't think of, I can't think of all the other, all the other ones off the top of my head, but um yeah a good amount of cards coming going into supply and it really um didn't tank pr prices that much T prices have been pretty steady i would say over the, over the course of the weekend i haven't looked i haven't really looked super hard over the last day or so um if there's been much change um but and also there's they've also announced uh, another sub turning where it's only common cards um are available for it so common prices uh have been have been going up quite a bit. I think it was 0.015 was the floor for the worst common card right now because of that tourney. Um, but yeah, we can talk some more fancy top. Um, Seth, I know you've been deep in the streets. Have you, you have any, uh, new strategy recently based on the updates or any, any thoughts there? Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much going on with it. It's, uh, there's still a good opportunity for people that just want to, play the market um i think it's really expensive to get in to play lineups right now um you but there is opportunity there too um especially with these new guys right one attention is going to be taken away from the lower tiered players from the original mint um so there could be opportunity with those guys the new players we don't really have established scores for them so if you know more than the average person in the market you could probably get good entries on decent cards there um this common only tournament i don't know man like if people are bullish on fantasy market could really go nuts during this common tournament there's just not enough cards for twenty thousand people to play in both tournaments so i mean that supply crunch alone is enough to make things get stupid um I'm I'm like constantly back and forth on how I'm feeling about my position. I I'm I have so much I have great gains right now. I'm up like 12 ETH, right? So like do I want to keep playing for the gold, for the rewards? Do I want to hold for, you know, the crunch? Like it's really kind of difficult to figure out. I'm trying to left curve this thing as much as possible and, and not, you know, and overanalyze to the point where, you know, I, I kind of I don't want to hedge down the middle. I'd rather kind of let the risk ride and and uh, see where this thing goes. Or I'd like to just exit and capture all my gains, you know, all at once. I don't know. I'm, I don't really want to play it half and half. Um, there's just so much. Like, the macro is really interesting. When the macro takes over, when the GME stuff takes over, when... When meme coins take over, you got to think about those influencers, right? You might not want to focus on um, an ordinals or a BTC influencer. You might you might want to focus on, you know, like a Wall Street bets mod, right? Or you might want to focus on someone who talks more about the news. Like, there's so many ways to play it where, you know, a, a top card from today might be, you know, a top fifty card next week, whereas. You know, someone who's not even being discussed, who's in the bottom half or even close to the bottom, could end up winning a tournament for you next week. Um, so it's really interesting. The more you're kind of analyzing the overall economy, uh, how you're looking at where the meta is shifting to, it's the best thing about about um, fantasy, in my opinion, 
is that it's not meta dependent. It rides on top of all metas. So mm -hmm. no matter where markets go, fantasy top is going to be relevant because Twitter's relevant, right? So I like that about it. Um, it's just it's going to come down to you know how the team kind of makes economy based decisions on inflation of cards, deflation, how they reward players versus heroes. Um, but the fact that so many people are developing on top of it for metrics and data, um, that's a really bullish signal for me. I don't know if people are going to spend a lot of time developing for this if they think it's short, like super short lived. Um, they also have a fan coin that's going to be dropping to points collectors, I believe. And that's a long term reason to have a little bit more longer outlook on how the performance could be. But if I was a small wallet right now, like say I had like 0.2, I would probably try to understand what the meta is going to be over the next five days. I wouldn't play a lineup and I would only buy commons and I would try to be selling those commons into the common only tournament. There's just not enough cards out there for everyone to play. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone who played last time. I don't mean all holders. As there's, I don't know what it was, 150, 200,000 people that have engaged at least one time with fantasy. And there was about 19,000 players in the last game. And I'm just talking about players. If there's 20,000 players in both of these tournaments, tournaments, there's just not enough cards. So I, if I was, you know, like a 0.5 and below wallet, I would pick, I, I don't even know if I would spread out my money. I think I'd pick one, one hero who I really believe is going to do well over the next five days and then just ladder them out through up until the start of the common only tournament and try to have all my liquid out then you know rinse and repeat uh for the next tournament announcement yeah i love that analysis i think um i think an interesting talking point um which you kind of you kind of mentioned or alluded to is is how how this thing looks um you know when other things start popping off because there's going to be an opportunity cost uh for holding these cards uh, versus people who want to try their luck, you know, using that same capital in the shitcoin market. Because um, since fantasy is so new and popped off, like there hasn't been anything else really going on um, outside of it. Um, you know, you know, in any other metas or anything since it really started taking off. Um, and if this if this meme coin stuff s sustains itself. Um, and other things are popping off, then there's there's certainly going to be that opportunity cost, and people are going to, um, you know, have to weigh that if they want to hold these cards, uh, or if or if they want to, you know, dump them and, and try their luck um, elsewhere. So, I think that could see see some downward pressure, um, but also it could, you know, maybe there's it means more risk on um, in general across the board, um, and maybe that does lead to demand. I, th um, I do think there is. A similar aspect, um, you know, for those who played Rainmakers, where like you said like there is th there is like a bit of a guarantee there where we where, where you know you can still win prizes from. There's like this guaranteed utility built in where you know you can win prizes with your cards. So there's going to be some type of floor there um, that would be higher than than like an, a normal type of NFT, just because there it has it gives you this access um, or ability to win, um, you know, pretty good pretty good prizes over the long term so it's it's not like it's gonna go to zero by any means um but it could it could drop down um based on you know people wanting to rotate uh the different places since we have not seen that yet um since fantasy top has been live with with, with other things popping off like if this again like if this mean coins cycle um continues definitely no i agree there um the other thing that people need to consider that I'm trying to understand is the liquidity for individual cards. Um, so say you do stack, you know, five or six of one influencer's cards. Um, you, when you're listing it, you shouldn't be considering just the floor of that card. You should be grouping, right? You should be, you should be there. There's probably, you know, for every, um hero there's probably five or six similar performing heroes if not more so you're 
the liquidity isn't just for your card it's for similar cards also and um i don't know how many buyers there are but i do worry about having too many of one because that's like say i buy you know a bunch at 0.02 of one influencer and um, a similar influencer's floor is 0.015. Well, my card isn't really worth 0.02 anymore. It's it's worth the lowest similar in, influencer, right? Because if a buyer is not going to be like, hey, why am I going to buy this guy that's going to generate 502 points as a common for 0.02? Or am I going to buy this guy that's going to generate 499 points as a common for 0.015? So think about the liquidity for each card as it kind of fits into a group also. I would kind of worry about my position in that way where uh, the floor of my portfolio looks like this, but it's probably lower based off of, you know, the similar heroes around it. I don't know if that made any sense, but there's a little concern for me there. That's the DFS game. You know what I mean? You're speculating on people. Yeah, that's at, the... least, uh, uh, at least on this, you can't do like with regular DFS and have your fucking player injured all of a sudden. I guess the the equivalent of that would be would be oh he got he suspended or banned or he just stopped playing. Yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> mental health break. Or... <laughs> yeah, that's it. So there's, just, there's a lot of parallels with DFS, but that's the one thing that's you know like if he just decides oh fuck this I'm done tweeting and this is like I'm I'm burnt out because you guys are DMing me every two seconds to tweet. I think that's the biggest danger we have with these fucking cards <laughs> but uh, it'll, it'll also be interesting to see how the heroes um can use these cards to token gate like group chats or even discords um if they could start pushing value that way that could be interesting also and some have already done that i've i've joined a few of the groups but um i hate the twitter Twitter group chats are so hard to track for me. Um, it's almost worthless. Like if they opened up a Discord that was gated by holding cards, that would be cool. Um, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of avenues for to make these cards more valuable than just earning prizes. If they, you know, if people keep building on top of it, the some negative points we could talk about too. Like one for me is they had a hard time controlling botting last last game. They had a hard time, like really, like they had to cut the the tournament short, right? This game is growing, and there's more people on it, and a lot more people are gonna want to bot, and there's gonna be a lot more manipulation. Like they couldn't even control it for the small tournament they did. How are they gonna keep it in check for the next one? I mean, I feel like the one, the one negative point really is gonna be how do they ensure they run two or three or four different tournaments at a time with hundreds of different heroes or whatever they have planned and monitor each and every one and then like you know what i mean like it's it's going to be very hard for them to do i feel like they might be growing too fast but they have no choice to grow too fast because of the demand and then we might actually be going th straight to another top shot event even if we don't want it like i mean that's what happened with top shot they grew too fast they didn't have all the answers and they couldn't stall the mo the growth movement whatsoever because what are you going to do? People are coming in. You got to find a solution fast and you're not always finding the right solution, right? So it can, this whole train can get derailed real quick if you start having one, two or three negative tournaments or negative sentiments during a tournament in a row. So again, I love that it's moving in the right direction. We think that it is, but we don't have a big sample size yet to see if the team could even handle such a big task. They just have so much pressure and so much on their shoulders right now and they have the, the attention of the whole space that they're basically maybe not destined to fail, but they could fail very easily. We've seen this written, we've seen this in the past a few times. So that's kind of my, my only caution there is I'm trying to get involved, but I'm trying to not get too crazily involved just because, you know, they'll make one mistake. People will trust them still. And they'll, they'll, you know, they'll, uh, they'll back them, but then a second mistake. And then some people will start having doubts. And then the third mistake happens and everybody's calling them a French dev and selling the whole market their whole portfolio so you know just be cautious that that's how i see it that's kind of the bad thing that i see right now i agree with um the risk with the uh, twitter as a i mean it's great that they built on twitter because people don't have to go to a new dap right but it's also very risky because of the things you said so i i wrote like a four paragraph long thing when they shut down that tournament because i was so afraid of 
this whole thing crumbling because of the bots. Um, and I ended up like later that night listing everything I had. It's full on reactionary like behavior. And then I think I had like five or six things sell that were pretty much absolute bottom since it started, took it took off. And uh, I got up out of bed at like 2.30 in the morning and delisted everything and spent another five ETH or something. So yeah. I'm completely like all over the place emotionally with this thing. So, um, but that was a good move. I mean, I, if I sold now, I'd be up very significantly. So I think I definitely need to at least try to get my initials, initials. out. So yeah. yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. At least like Seth, you're, you're in deep. So get your initial out. It's not going to affect you that much. Sell what you don't think is going to do well and just, you know, keep the things that you like. Because like we, we see it with DFS and we saw it with, with Top Shot. When things start moving in the wrong direction, there's no liquidity to, to buy up your cards and your your inflated prices on your portfolio, you could have got you could have got that maybe at a when everything was hot like right now. But the minute everything changes, your portfolio goes from like twelve or fifteen ETH to three ETH. And you can't do anything about it because everybody's trying to sell and nobody's buying because of fears. So you know what I mean? Like you have a hard, you have an easier time getting out of NFTs than you do these things when they go sideways. So just, just something to consider. Like I know a lot of us are, are high on this game, and you just don't know when the peak is going to be. It might be a year from now. It might be two weeks from now. It might be tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. So better off just writing for free. You know what I mean? I don't want to, I don't want to put fear into anybody's mind. That's not my goal here. It's really just to, to get you level headed because a lot of the times, you know, we're so, we're so caught up in, in, in the FOMO and caught up in all the good things that we don't see the bad. And I, I speak for everybody here when, when I say that we've all made that mistake in the past where we're too invested in something, thinking it's too big to fail. And all of a sudden, something we didn't see coming. We get blindsided by something we didn't see coming because we were just so so caught up in all of it. And we bought into the whole like narrative of, that they're trying to sell that, you know what I mean? It turned, it turned, it did a 180 real fast and we all got wrecked. So just keep playing. I'm playing, I'm buying. I'm buying things that I see have value. I'm slowly buying in. Um, but if I was in a position where I had 10, 20, 100, 200 ETH in this thing, I'd be probably cashing out a lot of it. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in here because I feel like I'm a little bit in between um, Seth and Jinzo here. Uh, I don't have exposure to fantasy, but definitely looked into it uh, over the weekend and just did a deep dive into all the spreadsheets and tournament results and talking to people in MDHQ. Um, I think that everyone's giving really good advice just to keep a level head about you. Um, really liked what you had to say, Seth, about just buying commons. I definitely think playing the marketplace is a good move if you're not trying to get overexposed. Um, but the biggest things that I've seen are that there's a lot of room for fantasy as a whole to say, hey, we're going to inflate the supply of certain cards. And some cards just have crazy values um, compared to how many points they actually give out in the tournaments. So some of these legendaries of an influencer like Ansem, who's just you know low supply, very well known, probably going to be a top ten finisher every tournament. You know, maybe not, but like realistically, going to be a top performer. His cards are like eight ETH um, with a one point five multiplier. Versus there's epic cards out there for less known influencers that have big supplies that you're going to get, you know, a two time point multiplier. So it's really easy for those cards to surpass what Ansem's going to do, even if you have the legendary. So all that's to say, like, if you're going to play, just definitely dive deep into the spreadsheets and see where the value for points comes from. I think you can get a pretty solid lineup for under five ETH if you're looking to like actually compete. But with that also being said, looking at the spreadsheets and just talking to people who are in the tournaments, the payout really sucks unless you're like a top 150 finisher or above. So if you feel really confident with, you know, fantasy sports and that's your jam, go for it. But it does seem like there's more and more people entering the game. It seems like they might be inflating the supply a little bit. That to me is the thing where I'm just not going to get involved this late stage of the game. I think early on, great move, but there's just so many influencers who are going to continue to join. They're going to continue to inflate the play price or supply of cards. So I would probably stick to commons. I, I just think there's a more likelihood than not that the inflation could cause people to get wrecked or buy card prices that get a little too high. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, beyond that, I think the common strategy is great. 
but I'm also fearful of the TGE for Blast being less than a month away. I'm imagining similar to Rainmakers, once the season you know comes to a close, the the card value just drops substantially. So definitely something I'm mindful of. Uh, but yeah, no stance either way. I just think it's a matter of uh, keeping ahead about you and and just you know playing within your risk tolerance as always. Yeah, if you made yeah, for money, sure. like Seth said before, like if you made. Like you could play the flip game easily. If you made money on top shot, this is very similar. You're trying to find players that are gonna do well soon. You're trying to buy them at a value that they're they're not supposed to be at. Like, you know what I mean? You identify those that are on a, on an upswing that nobody's looking at, you buy them and you sell them. Same thing with Rainmakers. Like I know there's only a handful of us, maybe ten or fifteen of us doing it in here, but same thing. We went out we go out looking for cards that of players that are doing well and are looking to play better. And the NFL, same thing. When we were buying NFL players, we're like, oh, this guy's breaking out. Nobody's looking at him. Let's buy the card and see where it goes. Same thing with golf. Like, there's a lot of that happening. I, I did the same thing with, I took that experience that I had from DFS and from Rainmakers, from DraftKings, and I applied it here. And I bought a bunch of cards that seemed so undervalued to me, right? And yeah, the whole market moved up, but those that are undervalued should jump up. You know what I mean? Let's say now you buy a card that's undervalued and and it way overperforms the next tournament. His floor is not going to stay where it was, right? He's going to get he's going to have a lot of eyes on that on that guy, especially if he turns out to be one of the cards in the in the tournament winning lineup. So, yeah, there's a lot you can do with this. For sure. Um, sorry, there's definitely def uh, the deflationary stuff is very much happening right now. Um, I think it was Zeneca had like eight thousand mints um total originally and after burning for rares and and epics and whatnot i think his supply is below four thousand now um so there's a lot of that going on so i don't know what the actual supply is after burning right now um, i think it's around two hundred and eight thousand two hundred and twelve thousand um and they're not releasing cards like super fast either. They're going to release some with every tournament, but they're not going to release. Don't think they're going to release any more of the f season one heroes. I'm not 100 percent sure on that though. Yeah, um, you see that? No, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I thought you were done. My bad. No, no, no. I'm good. I was going to say that that to me is another maybe not a negative point, but that's one thing that they really have to get a grasp on because it causes a crazy imbalance. Like you have so many people wanting to play. You don't want to release too much supply, but then the floors get too high where people don't want to play because it's too high. So what do you do? Right. Like the burning is getting out of hand. There's not that many cards out there. We know that like people that like if you look at the there's not the supply is not crazy. So what do you do? What's the what are they going to do? Are they going to make a three card tournament? Or are they just going to release more supply? Or are they going to sell packs that are basically, oh, here's a pack of rares for much more expensive? Like they have to get a control on this because it's a it's a game with a lot of variables and it's not as easy as, you know, oh, like Top Shot. What they fucked up was, oh, right now we have too many players. Let's release a crazy amount. Right. And then all of a sudden nobody's playing anymore and everything's crashing like it takes a freaking master economist to figure this stuff out. And I don't know, like, they do they really have a handle on that? Because that's another really important point. I would say botting is probably number one. They have to figure that out. They have to figure out a way of getting that under control. And the second would be they need to figure out the market and the and the balance of the market and how to basically play with that. Because just like with real markets, you kind of need to know supply and demand very well. And you need to know how to control both sides of it to make sure that that there's a there's a healthy market and i feel like the swings could be so wild and so fast that they might not make the changes fast enough and it might affect the the, the product so it's it's going to be fun to see for me it's just fun to see how they how they control all this but at the same time it's it's also fun to uh, speculate on it you know like okay you want to buy a bunch of floors now you're you're anticipating that the market's just going to get squeezed more and more and then there's gonna, not going to be heavy release cuz they've said they're not going to release that many packs every tournament right so you're expecting prices to come up right you think you're safe but then all of a sudden what if they change their mind and say you know what we have we really need the deposit to drop more fucking cards now you know like it's just a fun it's it's a fun thing that comes with this i guess like are you gonna play the game if every common costs 0 0.1 one day i mean it's hard to get new people to play when the, when the rewards are not that good at the same time yeah it's hard i i think i'm gonna lock up 10 cards that I'm really comfortable with and 
that'll leave me like 78 cards that I'm perfectly free of, you know, free to let go uh, into any sort of big market moves. I'm not really concerned with the jackpot and, and all that stuff. I, I, I want to come out of this one ahead on in terms of ETH. Yeah. I'm like we're talking through this, and I'm thinking, man, do I deposit a bit more just by commons? Wait for them to to announce the game, because as soon as they announce like just the common only, uh, contest when they actually put it up, not just announce it. A lot of people don't even look at Twitter, but let's say when the tournament goes live, right? People are gonna buy to enter, even the people that have never played before, without realizing they won't even check what the rewards are. They won't know what the rewards are. So a lot of people might just, oh, let me buy a bunch of commons and list them. It's gonna cost me point one to to make a lineup right now, right? And um. Then when the rewards come out, people are probably going to be disappointed or whatever. You know what I mean? When they start getting the rewards and seeing they got garbage. But again, I mean, yeah. I feel like, yeah, I was buying commons at 0. 0.005. I wish I would have bought way more. um, Because now I burned a lot of those for rares too. But I feel like it's still an opportunity right now because the tournaments aren't out. I feel like we're not going to buy more. It's crazy because I'm saying all these negative yeah. things. But at the same time, I'm telling myself, maybe I should buy a few commons to flip. <laughs> So also consider this. I they hinted at I think it was uh Mikado hinted at there's gonna be a wrinkle in the common tournament. And then somebody else said, Are you gonna limit the entries to one star ranking each? So if you play five cards, you can't play you know five seven star ranked players. You'll have to you could play a seven, a six, a five, a four, and a three. Oh, or whatever. that's amazing! I mean, I just looked at my commons, and they're all uh, five or six, or seven. No, they're all seven and six star commons. So I wouldn't even be able to play in that tournament. Right. So, so that's that cool. would do two things, right? It would kind of squeeze the commons as a whole, but it would also kind of somewhat devalue like some segment of the i don't even know how that would work on the market yeah i'm not sure it would like, force people to buy to buy variety and not just the top so it yeah, could actually exactly. raise it would raise the floor of whatever is the least held which is probably you know like two stars right most people probably aren't buying two so if you've been buying a bunch of two stars and this is a mechanic that they use That'll actually really benefit you because most people who are buying commons are probably buying, you know, the top half of the performers. Right. Common level. So if More you're just probably. buying to flip the market on an overall uptrend, then if you're buying the bottom half of those performers, you're you would benefit a lot from that mechanic, I think. Mm -hmm. And what would probably happen would be like, let's say a five star guy that doesn't post much would drop like a rock. Like it would just sink because people maybe not sink to the bottom because you could still use it in other tournaments, but it would take a hit because now you're thinking, oh shit, I could only attribute 25 stars to this tournament and this five star guy is taking up a lot of my of my salary, let's say like in DFS, right? But he's not worth it because he doesn't make enough tweets or whatever. So you'd see him come down, maybe a two star guy that makes a lot of tweets and doesn't have a lot of suppliers shoot up like a rocket too. So I would, I would like that actually. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be bad. It would even the playing field a little bit. And it would like, you know, like a salary cap where, oh, your total lineup has to equal 23 or 25 stars, let's say. That would, that would be something cool. Ooh, I like the way when you put it like that, like um, a salary cap. That's exactly, yeah, that's that's what I thought when you started talking. Like, man, that sounds like a salary cap in DFS when you're doing lineups. That would be cool. I mean, yeah, if, if they sure. are trying to do DFS, that's that's something they can do. That's actually really smart. Um. Sorry guys, we, we, can, like, we can keep talking talk fancy about something top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can see we can keep talking fancy top, but I just wanted to um make sure we can wrap up the recording uh for Wake and Jake. Thank you all for, for coming by. Um we can kind of just transition into uh yeah, just just open mic. We can keep talking fancy top or whatever you guys want to chat about, but uh yeah, we can wrap up Wake and Jake. Uh oh, I did want to bring up one more point though. Go to Ross. I forgot to bring it up earlier. Ross mentioned that the Roaring Kitty stuff has only been, um, you know, these meme videos. He hasn't like gone on stream like what, what he used to be. So there is like, you know, the slim chance that his account is hacked and that would be 
obviously really bearish if if that was the case um so maybe if you want to wait more for like confirmation on if he like shows his face on stream again um uh or something of that nature but you know we've seen it we've seen in the past right we're, we're plenty of plenty of twitter account hacks uh so i did want to point that out not to end it on like a sour note but that's a good thing in general you're looking good but it's just, that is a good point that ross yeah that ross brought up um there's a chance of that happening big chance <laughs> oh one thing too sorry not to now that we're mentioning farms or whatever we were saying you know funny stuff i would say if you haven't looked into pirate nation i know we talked about it in the past please do like i mean i think that's the next big one and it doesn't cost much to enter or play there just jump into our thread and, and ask us questions in the pirate nation thread um that's the easiest one you can do right now and you could we're thinking it's going to be a good airdrop so you know if you've never got involved please do it's going to be it's going to be a, it should be a good one is that a grinders thing or how does that work uh well are we can we talk about this or just end the recording and talk about it after up to you jake whatever yeah yeah okay. yeah talk about it. if scott's here is he here he, lo he loves to talk about it and he's really good he's better at explaining it than me scott are you around can you talk um yeah scott's an icon i've been playing it for over a year now um it's a uh, yeah it's basically like every day there's like a gauntlet it's kind of like a little trading card battle game um it's pretty it's pretty easy to do and it's actually like decently fun in my opinion um and they all they have that uh which you basically like get points for booty points they call them which is going to convert to their token um and you kind of just grind that daily gauntlet um as well as there's some social quests too uh there used to be one where you just like log into different partner servers and say gm every day um they suspended that one for now but i think if you have like i think you still get points if you like retweet and uh tweet some of their posts as well as um change your profile picture to like your global discord profile picture to like a, a pot one of the one of their approved pirate ones and like put pirate in your name you get daily points as well so something you can grind uh on like alt accounts um have va va's grind for you if you want um and you get bonuses if you have a founder's pirate which are around like one eth i think right now or there's free pirates that you can get from codes um based on different uh sorry i thought someone knocked on my door um uh, based on different uh, partner communities they give out i think there's a bunch of codes and referral links uh if you wanted to get started with a, with a free pirate i believe people have posted a good amount um yeah just ask or just ask the pirate nation uh chat it is currently down right now though for maintenance yeah i think the chain got fucked up i don't know what happened with it but um they've been had issues since yesterday and i um, will say too for the uh social stuff you don't actually have to retweet or like or do any of it you just click the button that they send you to do the action and then you can click verify you don't have to actually complete it they don't check oh good shout nice. i didn't know that but yeah, the gun, the fame, the guns, uh, the gun, the game is fun too. Sorry, go ahead, Scott. What's up? Oh, no, I'm just going to say they posted an announcement just now. So it looks like it's going to be till tomorrow before the game's back on. And I guess the issue was their blockchain node provider effed something up because um, it's everything with the Arbitrum L3s. Um, so it's not necessarily their, their tech, but they said likely tomorrow before the game comes back on. Yeah, nice. Thank you. I've I've been liking it though, man. The gauntlet's fun. You know what I mean. I don't have as much time to play, but I've started getting back into it recently. Um, before this, I was just letting my 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 you know my pirates accumulate points. Um, but I'm I've been playing it every day now, and I'm I'm enjoying it. Like the gauntlet's fun, the crafting's fun. Like I I used to just grind for, you know, the quests before, but now they made it a little bit more interactive, and it's cool. I like what they're going where they're going with this game and. And we forgot to mention too that they're ex Farmville, right? They they created Farmville, so it's not nothing. They're a big team. They're they know what they're doing, and uh, they've done a lot of updates over the months. They never gave up. All bear, and you know, I mean, they've really. I think they've built something nice here. Plus, the airdrop's going to be juicy. Yeah, team is absolutely loaded. That's that's the main reason I was so bullish on it for since the beginning. The CEO, co-founder of Farmville, which. I think got like 
up to like 10 million or so like daily active users um so they know how to scale for sure um they also have you know team members who are ex like riot games um i think some other big ones um and they also raised 33 million dollars like in the heat of the bear market like when no one was raising any money so um yeah i think i think it's pretty bullish they built their own chain too, which is pretty, which is pretty big, I think, for in terms of valuation. Like it's, it's not just like you, that. Hopefully, you, other you cut uh, out there, Jake. You sound kind of low for after you said they built their own chain. I couldn't hear you too well. Yeah, am I better now? Yep, you're good. Yeah, I was, I was just saying that they built their own chain, so I don't think the valuation itself is going to be based on, uh, you know, just the game, but also, um, the whole. You know, chain as as well, so um, they could get a bigger valuation than what you might expect for some, you know, the game because, um, you know, they, their their goal is to have other games also be building on this this Apex chain is what it's called right now. Um, basically, facilitate on chain gaming um, in a way that's like super, you know, super extremely low transaction costs for these games and to work well. So. Um, I think that's kind of like the broader bull case is that it's not just a game. It's also a whole ecosystem. Yeah, I love that take. To the moon. How many accounts are you playing, Jinza? I cut down to two. I don't know. Like, I know if it, is that is that OK now or should I be doing multiple accounts again? Like, what's the deal here? I have five pirates. What's the best thing to do? Well, the multiplier is definitely better if you're all in one account because you've got founders and Jake has founders. So, I mean, Jake's probably got like a crazy multiplier for keeping them all in one wallet. Um, the thing is like running those hard gauntlets is what really jumps you up the ranking. So, I mean, I'm, I'm running four accounts, but that's with, you know, founders in each of them because I can clear hard gauntlet on four. What do you do for hard gauntlet? Like, what what ship do you have, and what's your setup? Because I don't, uh, I've never tried them, but I don't even know if I can get them done. I know on my main account I could run through the regular gauntlet pretty easily, but on my my sub account I have a hard time finishing the last one sometimes. Have you tried it on your main? Did you say the hard gauntlet? I haven't tried yet. Um, I thought I could do both a, a regular and a main uh, and a hard, but I guess you can't. You can only choose between one or the other. I guess I'll try one tonight and see. Uh, but I have a level twenty yeah. captain, and yeah, it's I, and a, and a galleon. You can you can definitely run it. Um, like you can do both in a day. I mean, the reason oh, I could. do it is if you just clear, yeah, if you just clear the normal ones, that's about fifteen hundred points a day. You have to pay five hundred gold to run the hard, so it is like it's in game currency gated. That's like you know about four dollars, I think, that's worth of bad. gold. Um. If you can, and so if you unlock it, that lets you run it as many times as you want for that 24 hour period. It's the same. There's like five matches and it gets increasingly harder. If you are able to full clear, however, you make more gold than you do paying the entrance fee. And the, I mean, for me, the reason I'm running it on multiple is the points. It's, um, it's almost 10,000 points a day to, to clear those. So you quickly, that's, that's the way if you can run it to quickly jump ranks. Um, but you were saying for your like you have a you have a high level pirate um, and a good ship, so I would say it's worth it to unlock it at least once and give it a try and see what you think yeah. of it. I'll do that. I'll try that tonight. Thanks. Oh, actually tomorrow, right? That's when it restarts. Yeah, it's not going to be back till tomorrow. But yeah, I mean, for anyone that's not doing it, like you know, I gave a couple people in my family codes, you know, just because I wanted to let them play it for free. And same as you, I thought it you know could have reasonable upside. Um, and one of my nephews is he, like, he's been playing it for two weeks and he's already at like the third highest tier of points. He's got like 350,000 points from a free code. Oh, nice. So, and he's like never been in crypto. And that's the thing is like, you know, I never wanted to, a family asked me about it. I never wanted to get them into it, but this is like free to play thing. So I was like, well, if he's ever going to jump in, like give this a try, it's a fun game. And he's way into it. And you know, his goal, I forget what the second highest tier is, but that's his goal is to get to like 800,000 points off of single pirate free account so that's cool oh, that's that's good that i mean when you see that money come in it doesn't matter if it's a few hundred bucks or maybe a few thousand you just don't know what it's going to be right but if you get an airdrop and you've done just free 
like a little bit of work every day for it like you like what the hell how come i'm missing out on this this whole time like even my roommate i got her to buy a few eggs for saku right i got her to play the game as soon as i jumped in i told her hey download this game just click the egg when i tell you to or when you get the notification be quick on it and you know i mean it gave her a little bit of exposure to crypto or to or to nfts or whatever without really getting her involved any other way and at no cost to her so it's been cool to see the evolution a little bit you know and then when the egg the eggs drop and the eggs dropped she had whitelist plus regular she threw a bit of her money and i gave her some too bought a bunch of eggs and she was like what the hell these eggs i bought them for 40 bucks and now they're worth 200 i'm like yeah welcome to my life <laughs> so it's cool to see you know like it's a good way of getting people involved without really having them to pay anything really that's what i like about pirate nation and about saku when it first came out yeah that's awesome yeah same thing like i, I loved it you know, I, I don't even want to tell them a dollar number, same thing. Like, we never know how these are going to turn out. But like Jake and you were saying, like, all the catalysts are there for this one to be good. So, I mean, that would be amazing to see them get this big airdrop win from their, their first project where they had to put none of their own money in. And it's just time playing a game that they actually enjoy. So, you know, that's it's fun to, like, talk pirates with them now. Exactly. It gives you a talking point. Like in my restaurant, we were two or three people doing the Saku egg. And they could be in the middle of the rush and someone would scream tap your egg <laughs> we're fucking dropping all the food to tap our eggs <laughs> like i'm the boss and it's supposed to be a serious place but yeah you know what i mean i'm trying to get people out of the gutter so you know we're tapping eggs <laughs> or one of us is free sometimes i'll play my two mini games like early on when we're still cracking eggs I was, uh, i'll play my mini games and all of a sudden everybody will give me their phones because i have more time and i get all, all perfect so i'll be like doing all the fucking games for everybody in the restaurant it's it was funny yeah, it was the same. Like he was showing me his account the other day, and he's already hit some rare items in chests. And he was like showing his dad, who's this, you know, like does construction and stuff. And he's like, "Look, I just hit this rare ship upgrade plan. It's worth sixty dollars that I can go and sell." And he's like, "You're doing what?" I love that reaction. It never, it never gets old, man. Even with my dad, I always, I always like kind of rub it in when I do something great on the space. And he looks at me with these wide eyes, you know, and you can just tell what he's thinking. I've worked all my freaking life hard, like I work. And this guy's making a few hundred dollars a day just pressing stupid buttons on the internet and selling monkey pictures. <laughs> like, you know, that same look everybody gives you of like, fuck you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. But yeah, I mean, it was like, it's cool just to see it click for them. Like, you know, they're younger, they got it right away. But like, oh, here's the opportunity here. I put my time into this and then they can see a return from it. So. Um, yeah, we can end the recording, by the way, if, if, if it hasn't already been. I'm just going to stop it there.